this video I will explain a little bit of bicycle dynamics uh, simulation with Python. My name is Gustavo. I am Professor Gustavo Sanchez in uh, at JK Achimukat University. And uh, so bicycles Bicycle dynamics, it's a really interesting topic. And it's very complex also. Um, what I am going to present here is, in, it's uh, taken from these, this paper, this article, Bicycle Dynamics and Control, Ad Adapted Bicycles for Education and Research. The author of this paper, this paper are Professor Armstrong, Klein, and Leonardson. So you can read the uh, paper in this link. Okay, this link here. The paper is here, by the way. And uh, I will explain only the most uh, basic uh, model that is the uh, second order model but I think that even if uh, simple it, it, it is interesting to see how uh, in fact the model is able to explain uh, very important things in terms of the bicycle dynamics okay so we will assume that this bicycle, our bicycle, consists four rigid parts. Only four rigid parts, two wheels. In this case, we have these two wheels, the, the back wheel with center C1 here, and the front wheel with center C2. So here, we have a frame, this is the frame here, this structure is the frame, and the front fork with handlebars, here we cannot see, but uh, imagine that here we, you have the uh, handlebars also here. And then the influence of pedals, chain, brakes, all these things on the dynamics of the bicycle will not be considered here. So uh, we will imagine now that uh, this, the distance uh, between the two centers, this distance here, this here. is the um, base, B, the base of a bicycle. And if you see here, this point P3 is the projection of this angle. So we will assume that the angle of this uh, fork, uh, that force here, you will have the handlebar uh, and this angle is lambda, and the projection of this is P3. So the, this small this distance here is C. And uh, in fact, if this is a more general case. We will see that in fact for us, this C will be zero, and this angle here will be 90. And uh, so. The rider's upper upper body will be modeled as a point mass, only uh, very similar to what we were uh, studying with the inverted pendulum, that can move laterally with respect to the bicycle frame. So the rider can apply a torque to the handle parts that, of course, uh, the rider can apply force not only on pedals to uh, uh, make the bicycle 
gain speed, but also he will be applying torque on the handlebars to stabilize the uh, position of the bicycle, of course. So we assume also that the bicycle rolls on the horizontal plane, okay, and uh, with constant linear speed. So in this model, we are not uh, interested in uh, you know, the acceleration of the bicycle in, uh, as a linear speed. We will assume that the bicycle is already uh, going with a constant speed. And we are only concerned on this angle here, this angle, this phi. This is the angle of the roll angle of the rear frame. Okay, this angle, of course, we want this angle to be zero. It's very similar to our inverted pendulum. If you see here, we want this angle to be zero, but it means that the bicycle is, is going fine. And uh, so we will assume that the control variable, the variable that your rider can change, in fact, is this. Delta. So the driver apply, will change this angle, and this angle will try to stabilize this angle. So in this case, we have a system, a model in which the input variable is angle, and the output variable is also a angle. So we assume that the steer angle is vertical, as I told you, lambda will be 90 degrees. Okay, so this is important, the coordinate system, x, y, z, we have here, this is x, this is y, and z is, uh, you can imagine, is uh, perpendicular to this plane here. Okay, z is this one, you see, this is... Uh, different view, here you have set and, and this is y. So this uh, phi here, that is our desire, we, we, this is the control variable, in fact, in the system. Uh, we will take phi, for example, it will be positive to the right. So this coordinate system is attached to the bicycle. So this um, coordinate system will be moving, yeah, will be moving with the bicycle, in fact, and the origin is at the contact point of the rear wheel. When the driver changes the steer angle, the coordinate system will rotate, yeah, will rotate a little bit around a point here, zero, which belongs to the y-axis and uh, this angular, the angular velocity of this rotation will be v into delta upon b, where b is the wheelbase. I will try to explain this in, uh, at the end of this video, so please uh, refer to the, the, uh, my explanation at the end of this video. So, then the transfer function from delta to phi can be approximated by this transfer function. So, it will be long to uh, show how you can obtain this model, but if you read, if you refer to the paper of Professor Armstrong, he will explain how you can obtain this model for uh, this transfer function. And I would, I would like to compare the transfer function of uh, this, uh, uh, the, this model of the bicycle with the transfer function that you can obtain for your inverted pendulum. We have seen that if we uh, consider the inverted pendulum, Theta is the uh, angle of the inverted pendulum, and U is the force that you apply to the inverted pendulum, to the cart. 
uh, to stabilize this theta. And you can see that if you, uh, if you refine H, this H here, as uh, this quantity, okay, you see that the denominator in the inverted pendulum and the denominator here in this model of bicycle is exactly the same. So both systems can be written with the same type of denominators. So this is very interesting. And in this case, what is H? I will show you. H, in fact, is this distance of the center of gravity of your bicycle. Imagine that here you have the center of gravity. So H would be this uh, distance to uh, the uh, center of gravity. And A, A is this distance here. Okay. From C1, projection of C1 till this point also. So it is interesting to see that uh, we have the same type of dynamics in terms of the denominator of the transfer function. However, you see that here you have a numerator in the numerator you have this uh, this term here s plus v open a, which is which is not there here on the inverted pendulum. You see in the vertical pendulum you have minus one over there. So what it means that is in fact in terms of dynamics, it is uh, if you study more about control system, you will see that it means that the presence of this uh, term here makes that it is a lot easier. It is a lot easier to stabilize the bicycle if you compare to the inverted pendulum. In fact, it is more difficult to design a control law for to stabilize this, but in fact, for this, it's not too difficult to uh, stabilize the bicycle. So this is good for us because well, you don't require a lot of knowledge. You know, you can learn how to stabilize the bicycle very easy. So, Let's assume here some numbers, A is 0 0.8, B is 1.5, D is 3, H 0 0.5, G is 10. So in that case, you can see that this is the um, transfer function that we obtain for this bicycle in which we have this uh, numbers for the um, The, 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 some numbers that for uh, this hypothetic uh, bicycle. Okay, so if you take this and you uh, use this instruction here, in my previous video I, I show uh, I was uh, explaining how you can go from here to here from the transfer function to the bicycle to the, uh, this is the code, in fact, using the uh, control, uh, Python control package. So you see that this number 3.2, you put this here, okay, you will put this 3.2, you can put this outside, and then you have TF here. Okay, so here you can see that here I have one, 3.75, and here I have one. So you can see that I am using this trick. I am putting one here and one here. So it means that the, um, the two polynomials, I taking this 3.2 outside, and I do this in order to have polynomials that begins. The first term will be always one. One here, one here. Sorry. So this is one type of normal standard uh, way of presenting trans transfer functions. 
and uh, you will see why I am doing this. So the natural response without driver, imagine that the driver is not applying any force and then there is a small 0.1 radiance of the initial uh, condition. So the, the bicycle is going a little bit to the right. This is approximately like uh, five, six degrees. You can see this five or six degrees. So what happened is that if the driver is not applying any, uh, any force, any uh, angle to the handlebars, and you start doing this, you can see that the angle is increasing very quickly from 0 0.1 to approximately in one second, 1 1.4 second, 1.5 second will be 90 degrees. Which means that, in fact, in fact what happened is that the bicycle is falling down. So, and the, and the driver also, if the driver is there, of course, the driver will fall down. And so, this is something that we don't want. This is not good. Okay, the bicycle cannot operate in this way. The, the driver has to apply some, some force there. So now imagine that we take into account the driver's feedback control. So we say, okay, you have to drive, you have to apply some angle to the handlebars and we will take into account this feedback using this uh, type of equation. So the angle delta that is applied to the front fork will be proportional to the angle, to the roll angle itself through this constant here and minus with this minus sign. So if you assume, for example, that you take uh, this proportional constant, we, we say that we are using, in this case, a proportional control. And if you take Kp equal 4, for example, then you will have now, you don't have a um, open loop system, you have closed loop system. And the closed loop response from the initial condition um, you will have this. So be careful here. This will be now the closed loop uh, transfer function. And for this, you have to use this instruction here, feedback. Okay, so you, you take the feedback instruction and you take this proportional number. See that you obtain this proportional number here. And this is your transfer function open loop, open loop transfer function. And then this one here, you have to put also there. So you can uh, print your transfer function using this uh, instruction, and then you can plot the impulse. So now what, what will happen? Close, now for the closed loop, huh? now for the closed loop uh, system, and then what I am doing here is that I am, this 0 0.1 is the initial angle, and I, I have to divide here upon 12.8. This is the closed loop gain, in fact. So if you do this, if you run this program, you will find something. Now you will find that the closed loop, now you, you are simulating that the um, bicycle now it's uh, having the driver that is applying the, the uh, angle to the handlebars and from this uh, initial angle you see that in uh, almost uh, one second the uh, roll angle is uh, very near to zero so it means that in just one second the uh, Applying this, this um, control loop, the uh, driver is able to stabilize the bicycle and go OK. This is good. This is something that we, we, we want to have this type of things because it means that the driver will be safe on this bicycle. OK. so. What I propose is that you now you can 
try to change and take different values of uh, the mass, uh, different values of, uh, in fact, mass is not here, but you can take different values of this uh, A, B, speed, uh, H, and this, um, this is constant, this you don't have to change. But if you, if you take different values of this and different values of this proportional controller, you can see what happened with this, with this type of um, response. And uh, you can see if uh, maybe the, um, this curve here could be faster or maybe it could be slow okay and you can see uh, what will change if you and maybe be careful for some values of kp and you can try to test this try to test small values of kp and maybe you can see that for small values of kp uh, even if the um, if the driver is applying the control, uh, the, this control is not enough to stabilize the bicycle. You can try to test this, and uh, if you can, uh, you can upload your uh, solution and send me through email or in our website. Okay. Okay. I would like to show you why. We have the approximation here for the angular speed, okay, equal to the tangents, tangential speed uh, times delta upon b. So, to illustrate this, you can consider this initially. Okay, so imagine that you have your bicycle here. This distance, initial distance here is B. This is the base of your bicycle. And then, uh, small time after this, once you have applied this delta angle, the steer angle, what will happen is that um, so this will be the new position of your bicycle, this one, okay? Assume that the center of gravity is this one, it moves this distance, B, okay? After uh, a small displacement of um, this delta. Okay, and then, so, we can see that, in fact, if you determine this angle here, this angle here will be the same of this angle here, delta. Okay, so what will happen then is that you can see that the distance or the tangent, tangential speed, V, will be based upon this t, uh, the time, small time also. And then omega, which is the angular speed, will be this delta upon t. Therefore, you can see that you have this relationship between the angular speed and tangential speed.